we are speaking about our security, not only in Christ for heaven, but our security in him relating to the storms of life. And here's what I have learned. If God does not isolate me from a storm, he will insulate me in it. And I would prefer he would isolate me from it. But I learn more when he insulates me in it. But one way or other, the safest place on this earth, and obviously it applies when we get to heaven too, but the safest place here is to be in Christ where you're secure. You're secure financially. Even if the stock market goes south and your portfolio gets blown into smotherings almost, and you tend to panic. 1929, they were jumping off high bridges. In Christ, we're secure. In Christ, we're secure. This is a very insecure world. There's bodily attacks. There's mental attacks. There's spiritual attacks. There's uh, domestic violence. There's sickness. There's divorce. There's all kinds of horrible things that goes on in this world. Where can a person be secure? We're secure in Christ. And this tabernacle proper was secure. It was based on silver, which is redemption, and then the gold of God and our righteousness held together with the bars, and then the four layers that held it steady as well. And then, of course, these ropes and stakes that were driven in, that held it absolutely steady. And do you know that although there were no nails, no screws, no hinges, and no glue used, there's no report of it ever moving half an inch in 40 years when the storms beat down upon it and the rain came down and all kinds of horrific weather. It probably was the most brilliant building ever constructed. And yet there it was, absolutely secure. God's saying, you obey me and you get inside me. You're secure. I'm telling you, friends, we're secure in Christ. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? Yes, my anchor's going to hold. Why? Because it's secured in something beyond this world. It's in Christ. More than my portfolio or any such thing. Bless God. We're in Christ. Oh, this would get you excited. The great Moses didn't write many Psalms, but he wrote Psalm 91. And you can be sure when he was writing this, he was thinking about the security in that place. The security of the tabernacle is amazing. It was just a, like a portable thing. Why didn't it blow over? Are you kidding? It never moved. Not even a quarter of an inch. And what did he write? Look at it. Psalm 91, verses 1, 2, 7, and 9. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now listen, friends, this is a favorite scripture of ours. Four times, Moses, in these two tiny little verses, four times he uses a different name of God. He is so secure in God. So we'll just mention them. We have had full messages on it. There's not time. He says, He that dwelleth in the secret place, in Christ, in the blood, in the tabernacle, based on silver, Hallelujah. Not psychology and not money for miracles and not self-esteem. I don't care what the preachers on TV said. The secret place is based on silver and secured in Christ. And what is it? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Who is that? That's one of the names of God. That's El Elyon, who is the possessor of heaven and earth. He owns everything and is willing to share what he owns with those that trust him. Shall abide under the shadow. The word there doesn't mean shadow as we accept it. It simply means protection of the Almighty. Who's the Almighty? El Shaddai. Look this way. I have to throw this bit in, though it's part really of another message. El Shaddai is a name from, for God that means the big-breasted one. We're all adults. We can talk for a moment. The big-breasted one. God pictures himself as the big-breasted one. What is the idea? The most hopeless, helpless creature on earth, far more than a little animal, is a newborn baby. And the picture is of that baby at the mother's breast. And God says, I'm El Shaddai. When you're at your most hopeless and helpless as a believer, you keep looking to me because I want you to know I've got ample milk. I've got ample supply to take care of you. You're secure. Why? Because you're in the tabernacle. You're in the secret place. You're built on silver. You're redeemed. Just stay where you are and I'll take care of you no matter what kind of rain is coming down outside. 
I want this morning before you leave this place, I lost it again, I want this morning for you to go out of here with a sense of security. It's not in Wall Street. It's not in your bank account. And it's all right to have a little money on the side. I'm not against that at all. Some people have said, you know, I know some rich people and they're not happy. Hey, listen, I know a lot of poor people and they're not happy either. So that's nothing to do anything. But that's not where our faith is. Where is your faith today? Where have you hitched your wagon to today? Moses was in the most secure place in the world. He was in the shadow of the Almighty. But he said more than that. He said, I will say of the Lord, verse 2, which is what? Yahweh, the God who's in covenant with me, he is my what? My refuge. Do you not believe that there were times when Aaron was in there ministering to the Lord and there was a storm going on outside? You can be sure of it. His idea was not to run out and say, what am I going to do about the storm? His idea was stay put where you are under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, Yahweh, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, Elohim, the creator not only of all things, but the creator of seemingly impossible doors to be opened on your behalf. In him will I beta, I will trust. When you're in Christ, you know what happens? Verse 7, a thousand shall fall at, my si at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Did you hear that? It shall not come nigh thee. When? When you keep on trusting that you're under his shadow and you're depending on nothing except the silver of redemption. That doesn't mean money. That's the illustration for the blood. Do you understand that? Because, look what it says in verse 9, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. And then it goes on to say other things. I remember hearing from a friend one time, this would probably be 30 years ago when there's a lot of talk about, you know, the Russia and America and these ballistic missiles and so forth. And people were building uh, underground shelters and so forth. And this very rich man, this is a true story. I know the person concerned. This very rich man brought this preacher friend of mine in and said, I want you to see uh, the bunker that I've built underneath my house. Reinforced steel and reinforced cement and so forth and so on. So he showed them all around it and it was absolutely fantastic. And he said to the preacher friend of mine, he said, well, what do you think of that? He said, it's fantastic. Only he says, I've got a better one. A better one? He said, you don't have a better one than this. It's reinforced steel, reinforced cement. What's yours made of? He says, mine's made of feathers. Feathers. He said, what do you mean? Under his wings. That's where I'm trusting. Where are you? Where do you live this morning? Tarpon Springs or Holiday or Clearwater? No, I don't mean that. Where do you live? in the place of insecurity because you've nothing to anchor to, you've nothing to hold on to. You're supposed to because you're a Christian, but you're not really activating it. You hold on to him and the financial storm outside will pass on by and the sickness storm will pass on by. You might hear it, but you're not going to move because you're based on redemption and you're in there with the Shekinah glory of God and you're secure because you're surrounded with the gold of his wonderful divinity.